Hello and welcome to the rather nice interior of the updated Kia Exceed. Now you might be thinking, updated, hang on a minute, it's still a pretty new car. And yeah, you're right, it is. But this is a top seller for Kia in the UK. In fact, one in 10 of their cars sold here is an Exceed. So the brand seen fit to update it, tweak it, and add a few new trinkets here and there, which I'm gonna run you through in this video today. So what's changed? Well, you might notice a few minor detail changes on the exterior, the lights are a little bit sharper, and generally there's a little bit more pizzazz to the design, a few more bits of chrome, and on this model, which is the three-level car, which I'm told is the one most of you guys will be buying if you're looking at an Exceed, well, this one gets a few unique features which make it stand out from the range. But really what sells these cars is what's under the bonnet, or actually what's under most of the car, because this is the plug-in hybrid model, that's very, very popular with fleet buyers. It's pretty cheap to run, and with 30 miles of claimed range when you're driving in electric-only mode, it's pretty competitive as well for the segment. Drives really nicely. On these urban roads, it's so easy to steer. Doesn't feel any bigger than a hatchback, because it's not. It's basically a C-segment hatch, a Focus or Seed-style car, just a bit taller. But it does ride a little better because it rides a bit higher than the normal Seed. You've got a bit more suspension travel, and Kia's set it to be a little bit softer as well. Although it isn't Rolls-Royce, soft there is definitely you definitely sense that there's some weight in the car it weighs 1.5 tons with the batteries added so i wouldn't go expecting the ride you'd get in a top-end mercedes but for this class it's definitely competitive so now i've left it in its automatic mode which means it's doing electric and petrol as it chooses but if i click a button down here and i put it into electric mode now the engine switched off it picks up smoothly it's not quick at all but more than enough to keep up with urban traffic, absolutely. And the good thing is as well, when you're in an urban scenario, of course, with regenerative technology, it means when, when you come off the accelerator, when you touch the brake, it starts to put energy back into the battery. So you might even get a little bit more than that claim 30 if you're really, really efficient in your driving style. When you get onto the open road, even when you're in EV mode, the car will automatically start the engine if you ask for a lot more power. So if you put your foot down because you want to do an overtake or you're pulling out of a junction, both engine and electric motor will work in tandem. That's pretty standard practice these days. But what I have to say is, you don't notice it at all. I can barely hear the engine. I certainly can't feel it. There's no feeling of an engine starting or any vibrations. It's so refined. They've done a really, really good job when it comes to insulating you from the outside world in terms of sounds and also what's right ahead of you under the bonnet. You've got steer assist, you've got adaptive cruise control, all of the safety systems that Kia is famous for and that most buyers are gonna need. And you also get two zone climate control. You've got heated steering wheel, heated seats as well for both of the front seats. Spacious, comfortable, it's a nice place to be. And I think it's pretty nice in the back. Is it nice in the back, Henry? Yeah, we've got the Henry approval, Henry thumbs up. Would you drive this like a sports car? Well, I don't think you would because obviously it's a hybrid intent on efficiency, but because the sport mode is here and you can quicken the accelerator response and crucially, because Kia are really good at making comfortable seating positions. So I can sit nice and low in the car with the steering wheel in exactly the right position that I'd like it. Well, it actually does feel like a nice thing to drive. You are conscious of the weight, and if I just move the car around on the roads here, it does pitch and roll a bit. But it does feel quite, well, it's quite fun actually. It's quite a nice thing to drive. <laughs> Definitely not sporty though. That was all right, wasn't it? I think the changes that they've made to this plug-in hybrid model are gonna to appeal to a lot of people. And actually, there's a GT line over there with a few changes that I think a lot of other viewers are gonna enjoy as well. But before we have a look at that, join me around the front of the car again because I think it's worth looking at this interior in a little closer detail. Now I mentioned that this screen is wider and as you can see here, it's set angled at the driver along with all these controls down here. This stuff is so easy to use. Automatic gearbox lever down here, two cup holders and you've got two USB ports down here. One's a USB-C and one's a conventional USB. And then you've got storage down here, big cubby holes. And as I said, seating position is really very nice. In the back, Space is pretty good back here. In fact, actually, it's still basically a hatchback in its size, but I can tuck my feet under the seat ahead of me. This is set how I like it, and there's loads of knee room over here. And also, when it comes to the headroom as well, I've got good space above me. All right, it's a little bit snug to the side, but more than enough room here. You'll be very comfortable on a long journey. Middle seat, right, well, if I just scoot up next to our cameras here, 
Yeah, you sit higher as you'd expect, but again, there's still good room. You can put your feet either side here, and because there's no significant transmission tunnel down here, it means there is still room up here if you've got small feet to tuck them in here. Three teenagers in the back, no problem. Can't say the same for the rails they'll probably have on a long journey. Right, boot. This is very much like a, a seed hatchback. So Henry's already helpfully put in the camera stand over there to illustrate some space. But as you can see, it's not the tallest of boots. There's a bit of room under here, which is taken up now by the battery and some of the charge cables down here, but pretty generous. Look, we've got a big suitcase here. This is like a proper adult suitcase, maybe a couple suitcase, and that fits in there. No problem whatsoever. What else is there to talk about? Well, I should mention the charging. If you plug this thing into a home charger, it will charge in just over two hours. Uh, and yeah, pretty good all round, I think. Let's drive the GT line though. Okay, now we're in the GT line, which is the top model barring one, the GT line S. And I'm told that this is the car that consumers who aren't in the fleet market, for example, this is the car that's most likely to lure them in. Now, there's a key difference in this model to the other offerings, and that is that because this is slightly more driver focused, you can only get a turbocharged 1.5 liter engine with it. It's not hybrid, it's not mild hybrid, it's just a proper petrol engine. But it is turbocharged, which means it gets 160 horsepower and there's a nice bit of low down torque as well. Oh, and also there's a manual gearbox. It's a six speed manual, quite a nice one as well. But let's just talk about the key differences elsewhere in the car. So higher grade trim means higher grade finish. Everything is wrapped with leather or at least some leather, seats included. Same brilliant seating position, same great range of technology in the car, but the fit and finish is lifted just that little bit more and it does feel like a really high end product. Certainly one that will rival the best that Ford can offer with its focus. And it feels kind of the same when it comes to the engine and gearbox as well. This motor, it picks up nicely. It's 160 horsepower, so it's not sporting by any measure. Barely lukewarm by today's standards but it does get up and go and it revs out as well. I mean, the rev counter goes all the way to 8,000. You're gonna be changing way before seven. You can rest assured of that. But because it's got a manual gearbox, it doesn't come with drive modes like a lot of other models do. You are actually the drive mode. If I wanna drive it in a more sporty way, I just up the ante of how I drive the thing. Driving it around this urban area here, it's a really calm, very quiet engine. I can barely hear it unless I rev it quite hard. It's very, very, very quiet up front. And this gearbox as well is really nice. It's nice and slick through the gate. The gearbox itself as well, the travel of the lever is quite, it's quite short for this type of car. So it does feel quite sporty in that regard. What about the ride? Well, do you know what? I think I can notice the 200-ish kg less that this car is carrying because without the battery in the back and without the electric motor, it's just a weight up front with the petrol engine. It does feel lighter. All right. It's still not the most cushioned car, but you kind of forgive it a bit more because it's a GT line. There's a bit of a firmness over smaller bumps, but when it comes to the big undulating stuff, it's a really nice ride actually. Yeah, it definitely feels more eager on the front because there's more, you're more aware of the weight being over the nose and it steers nicely. Okay, so I'm just arriving up to a motorway slip road. So let's see how it deals with powering up onto a motorway. I need to stop heel and towing because most people don't do that. But it's so fun. Right, here we go, power on. Yep, motorway speed, no problems whatsoever. Good visibility all round actually. It's the first time I've really had to look in my mirrors to check how cars are next to me. And I can see really wide all around me. Visibility is really good. Definitely settles into a motorway crease very easily. I'm doing 70 miles per hour now and I'm doing two and a half thousand revs, which for a petrol engine, that's pretty low. Shows you that the gear ratios are nice and long, or long enough anyway, if you spend a lot of time on the motorway. There is a bit of road noise. It's sort of a background hiss at all times. Not much in the way of wind noise, but just a, just a hiss of road noise, which you might be able to hear right now. It settles down nice and easily. You've got adaptive cruise control as well, so I think you could lose a lot of miles without thinking too hard in this car, which will be nice to know if you're using this on the commute. So, that was the GT line, and you know what? I really liked it. It kind of felt like one of those old school hot hatches where you have to work the engine a bit hard, and then you get a reward of a really nice motor. It likes to rev out a little bit, and the six-speed gearbox in this car is really good. I think it handles nicely as well. So it kind of, to me, has surprised me so much that I think this is the car I would choose. However, if you are a hybrid buyer or you're a fleet buyer, 
can totally see why you'd want the plug-in hybrid version. For me though, also the added trinkets that you get on this, bigger wheels, and of course, there was a little bit of extra space in the boot because you don't have the batteries in the back. That really just edges it. And I think compared to the rivals, the C4 from Citroen, and even the Focus Active from Ford, this Kia feels just that higher level in terms of fit and finish. I'm a big fan, but which would you choose? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, do click that like button and subscribe to the channel because we've got a lot more cars to test. See you soon.